Hello and welcome. This is the solution to exercise one of problem set one. In this problem we are asked to investigate the use of a definition of a group and we're, the aim is to get a feeling for what's a group and what is not. Again here the definition, a set of elements G endowed with the multiplication operation is a group if the combination of any two elements in the group is in the group 2. If we have what we call an identity element in the group which leaves any other element invariant, we have associativity of our multiplication, meaning it is it doesn't matter if we combine the first two elements and then the third one or the other way around. And for any element a we have an inverse which we denote by a to the minus 1, which gives the identity. In part A of our exercise we're asked to endow the following elements 1 and minus 1 with a multiplication operation so that these two elements combined with the multiplication become a group. First of all in group theory we always denote uh, minus the element as the element bar, namely here we say one bar, to not confuse with the minus operation. And for if we if you want to construct a, a group, it's always it's always good to think easy first. We're trying the usual multiplication we're we're used to, and try out if this set is a group. So we're writing down the multiplication table for our set of elements with the multiplication we're in down here and we're doing this just the same way as we did it in the lecture and we're filling this out. This is fairly easy because we're all used to how to do the normal multiplication. So now we're checking the rules. We can check those four rules by looking at that multiplication table. First of all we have the first rule that says no new element may emerge over here and that's true. Secondly we have an identity element this is of course our element 1. Third, thirdly we have an associativity and this is of course true because of the associativity of our multiplication. And thirdly we have an inverse and that's true as well because elem every element it's, is its own inverse. So yes, this is a group and we can move on to part B of our exercise. In part B we're taking the set of all real numbers but we have to exclude the element 0 right here. The reason for that can be seen later. Now we're taking again the usual multiplication and check if this is a group. First of all, yes, the first rule is true. Every combination is still in the group. Secondly, yes, we have an identity element. Namely, the identity element is our 1 right here. Thirdly, associativity is true too because of the associativity of our usual multiplication. And thirdly, we have the uh, inverse element, namely for every x in our set of elements we define the inverse to be 1 over x. And here we have to exclude x equal to 0 because otherwise this term wouldn't be well defined. So we solved exercise part b. This is a group. We checked every four rules and now we move on to part c. In part c we are given the set of matrices SO2. And we're again taking the usual matrix multiplication and as it turns out this is the correct way how to implement the matrices SO2 into a group. Again what, what are the SO2 matrices? So this is given in the exercise. It's a 2 by 2 matrix cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta cosine theta with a multiplication where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. 
The most difficult part is to show that any combination of any two elements in this group, namely the multiplication of two of those matrices, is still in SO2. In order to do that, we need a theorem which is nothing else than the addition theorem for trigonometric functions, and you can remember it the following way. It's a little song. It's co sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Now we fill out the angles. Theta, phi, theta, phi, theta, phi, theta, phi. Here we have a plus, here we have a minus sign. And this is then equal to sine of the addition of both angles or cosine of the sum of both angles. With the help of this theorem we can compute the multiplication of any two of these matrices. We call them R of theta. So if we check if R of theta for any angle theta and times R of phi for any angle phi, we use this theorem right here to compute this is r of theta plus r of phi. And this is again in SO2 because this is modulus 2 pi again because of the functions cosine and sine being modulus 2 pi. The other rules are easy to check. The identity element is of course we take it as being r of angle 0 because then we have right here the identity matrix and r to the minus 1, the inverse of any r of phi, r of theta, is then given by r of minus theta. This can be seen from this rule right here. And the associativity is again given by the associativity of our usual matrix multiplication. As a final remark, we are asked to find the conjugacy classes of all three groups. This is a fairly easy task and I will only spend a few words on it. You can read the details on page 16 of our script. In the first, in the first group it's, it's clear that every element must be a conjugacy class of its own. In the second, in part b, we see that this is an abelian group, namely that it's every element commutes with, with each other because of the commutation of the real set of numbers endowed with a multiplication. This means every element of this group must be a conjugacy class of its own. In the third part, we, we can see those matrices as rotations of a, a certain angle. When we know that rotations of a certain, of a different angle with the same axis is in, in the same conjugacy classes only if there's a member of the group which changes the headiness of the system. If we compute the determinant right here, we see it's determinant plus one for every angle theta. So we have no headiness changing uh, element in our group and therefore every element is a conjugacy class of its own. I hope the explanations were clear and see you next time.